I go a single month, one single month, without making a Linux video. And look what happens. You can already feel my absence on the Linux sphere. It seems like the whole house of cards is now collapsing. Linux is over, well it's not over, just now been sentenced to a slow and intermittently painful death that's gonna be sort of hard to watch. Now, a lot of you, I have gotten so many emails about this. I get, I get emails to do things on news events every once in a while, you know, uh, I don't know, social controversy in the technology community. Now, I usually don't do it, but I think this is one of the ones that uh, I've gotten so much feedback or requests for this, and it is something that I guess is, shows the absolute state of society now that we might as well talk about. So, if you haven't heard already, Linus Torvalds has left the Linux project. Now, this is supposed to be temporary. We have no, how, how, no idea how long this is going to be. And it's not because he has, you know, has some kind of personal issue or he has to do something, you know, has business, he's sick, no, none of that. He's basically been, I guess we can say, say just bullied out of it. He's been browbeaten out of it, might be the pro proper word. He's been told that he's a bad, bad boy and that he should go think about what he's done. And he recently sent out an email to that effect in the, one of the most recent uh, updates to Linux said something to that effect. He's going to be, he's going to go put on his, go to his little cut corner and think about what he's done, basically. So what's been going on in Linux? Now, what's been going on in Linux is the same thing that's been going on in a lot of other software projects. Now, before we get into the specifics, um, those of you who are less familiar with, I don't know, the, the political state of software development recently, open source software development, free software development, whatever you want to call it, um, they're totally different. Um, but one thing that has been happening recently is the rise of so-called codes of conduct. Now, these are very controversial in very parti particular and predictable ways. Now, codes of conduct, in the abstract, what a code of conduct is, is rules for the standards of discourse to contributing to a repository or to a software project. In the abstract, that's what that is. So it means, you know, what kind of things, what kind of behavior we expect, uh, what kind of commits we want, what kind of, you know, different stuff. It, it can be variant from project to project. Okay. But recently, codes of conduct have a very particular political purpose. And that is, um, there's this uh, certain group of people, and, you know, those, those of you, the average normies out there, will usually call them SJWs, right? You, you've heard of these people. And these people are grifters. They're, they go from, I don't know, hobby to hobby to from group to group. They went to atheists. They went to video game people. They went to tabletop RPG people. And they've done the same thing in all of these communities. Now, I don't really care about any of these communities. I do sort of care about what happens to Linux and software projects because that's something that everyone can use, even, even if you're not, like, autistic or something. I mean, not to downplay people who play video games or whatever. If you're a kid, that's fine. Um, but... You guys who watch the channel might know I'm not a big fan of video games. Um, anyway, the, the, these kind of people have come to Linux. They've been around in software projects for a long time. They've had a lot of effects on software product projects in very negative ways. Uh, Mozilla Firefox is one particular example. But there are many other software projects where the priorities change in these codes of conducts. They have very particular codes of conducts that, at the first, at first glance, they just want moral... Uh, moral surrenderings are, are just trivial things that people might not matter about or care about. For example, you'll want uh, oh more inclusive language in documentation, and normal people look at that and they're like, okay, that's fine. You know, if you you want to use gender neutral terms, if you want to say they instead of he, that's fine. You know, a, n a normal person wants to be accommodating stuff, and that's typically how it is. And that's where these people get a foothold. Uh, things like this, minor little things. Then they start talking about inclusive language. Uh, they start talking about the flaws of meritocracy because meritocracy, as we all know, benefits white males and no one else. That's something implicit pretty much that everyone understands in some way or another. Uh, so it is their job to deconstruct meritocracy, to get rid of it, replace it with uh, underprivileged groups. And when I mean underprivileged groups, what people usually mean by that are the groups that you're not allowed to criticize. Uh, and I'm not going to go into what those groups are, you know what they are. But, uh, and a lot of uh, these people have been putting code of, codes of conducts out there. The objective is to not to improve the discourse, not to, you know, improve the quality of the project, but to gradually take it over and use it to political ends. 
Now, as I said before, you can look at 10, 10 or so years ago, you might remember, it was cool to be an atheist on the internet. It, 10 years ago, I remember that. I was a kid back then. You know, it was cool. It was edgy to be an atheist. If you were an atheist, you had all these hot takes. And then they got taken over by SJWs, right? They got taken over by these people. And atheism became less about being an atheist or not believing in a particular religion. And it became more of an issue of supporting leftist political causes. And atheist conferences got taken over by these people. And that, now we have atheists are the butt of every single joke on the internet, you know? Even atheists make fun of atheists, you know? Now, the one thing you have to remember about these people they, again, they will, they will say reasonable things at the beginning. That's always how it happens. Again, it's, oh, don't you want to use inclusive terminology? Don't you want to be use gender-neutral terminology? Don't you want to do all this stuff? But it is a way of giving the devil a foothold. And in all of these cases, uh, what happens is gradually, as that foothold expands, first, you know, when it comes to software projects, first, it's inclusive language. Fine. That's fine. That's something that people can agree on at a literal level. But after that, it becomes, well, you know, the often autistic people who write software, they don't necessarily have our standards of decorum, they're a little mean, they might call people mean things, they might care too much about the quality of the code and not think about the feelings of the people who are making commits or making contributions. And one of the things about the Linux project is that Linus is alleged to be one of these people. That is, Linus has a uh, allegedly, again, this is something that the news media is saying ad nauseum because they've basically been told it by, you know, SGIWs or whatever. Um, but people are saying that, oh, Linus, he's just such, you know, a big, big meanie to people who he has, he, he puts his standards too high and is not nice enough to people. Now, first off, in order to get a kernel written, in order to get in a, a significantly large software project written, that is something you need to do. You need to have a high level of sympathy with the efficiency of your code. And that often means steamrolling over people's opinions, realistically speaking. Uh, that's something that has to happen a lot. And Linus, I mean, Linux is literally named after him. It's his baby. And a lot of the changes uh, he, he has either accepted or rejected uh, have allegedly been done so in a way that uh, rubbed the feathers of other people. But I want you to remember, this isn't just about niceness, okay? Um, this is about a takeover, in the same way that it's uh, a takeover of the atheist community or some other kind of community. The issue is not to get people to be nice, okay? Because these people who are trying to take over, they're not nice to the people they don't like. They hate them. You look at what they're saying on Twitter right now. I'm not going to mention any names, but you can look them up. You can look at what they're saying on Twitter. They hate the people that they want to replace. They want it to be, them to be dead. They don't want them to contribute. They call them toxic. They call them dumpster fire. They call them all these words. They hate them. They want them done. They don't want their contributions, even if those contributions are good for the Linux project or any other kind of software project. So that's one thing you need to remember. This is not, it might be that some of the people who are going to take over the software project or who are going to like these codes of conduct, it might be that they're good programmers. But it, that is just incidental. Their goal is not programming. Their goal is not good software. Their goal is not good anything except for their political ends. That's it. And everyone knows it, and they will even say that that is their goal. So don't pretend otherwise. Now, now I'm just saying this because a lot of people out there, you know, I don't like these middle-of-the-road people who just, again, they want to be nice. Again, it's okay if you want to use gender-neutral terms and you want to be uh, accepting and stuff like that, that's fine. But you have to realize that 99% of the time nowadays, the unfortunate fact is those are used as wedges to get dangerous people, dangerous uh, priorities into software projects. Now, let's talk about Linus in particular. Linus put out a little email uh, on you know one of the recent updates of Linux. And again, he said he's been a bad, bad boy. He's going to leave Linux. He's going to think about what he's done. Oh, because he's so terrible. Now, Linus has what PewDiePie calls Swede cut genes, okay? And there is this high trust nature to a lot of Scandinavian people, and I think that Linus is showing it here. I think in the back of Linus's mind, he doesn't think he's actually been unreasonable. And most of the people responding to him said, you haven't been unreasonable. You've been, you've been very diplomatic, you've been forceful with what you need, but that is what's required for a good software project. But I think what Linus is actually doing is that he expects that he's gonna leave this project and the people who have been against him are just going to realize, oh, we've been unreasonable. He's gone off 
alone, you know, maybe we should let him back in and, you know, accept him for who he is or something like that because we've been a little, we've been a little too harsh. I think that's what Linus thinks is going to happen. And I'm just going to say that's not what's going to happen. Can, again, these people's priority is not Linus being nice. Their priority is takeover, political takeover. Now, it might happen gradually. It's not as if all of these people believe the same thing, but you have to think of it not as individual people with individual ideas, but you have to think of it as a kind of hive mind, right? This is a kind of hive mind takeover of Linux as these people have taken over many other hobbies or, or really the entire world. Now, how do I think, what do I think about the uh, absolute state of Linux? Is it over? I don't know, no clue. Uh, I'll say it's not, go Linux is not gonna disappear next week. I think if anything, it's gonna happen more like uh, what's happened to Firefox, where there's a gradual decline in code quality if they can't keep up, you know, keep their priorities in order. And so there's going to be gradual decline in the, pro uh, the quality of code and how it works. And I think people will gradually be jumping off. I might as well. I'll go ahead and say the chance last week of me ever using BSD was about 2%. Now it's about 30, 35%. I'll just say that. So I think... Um, you know, it's not over. Linux, again, is, of course, free software. You can fork it, you can do whatever, and that might be... I, part of the reason this is happening in Linux is because, just institutionally, it's gotten big enough to allow this kind of grievance mongering, all right? And when a corporation or something gets large enough that they don't have to think about efficiency all the time, a lot of things can go wrong, but this is just one of them. So, I'm not so blackpilled, not just... I might be blackpilled on Linux, but I'm not blackpilled about the user experience in the free software community because, granted, there are other projects like FreeBSD who have had problems, but, you know, the, the ecosystem is wide enough to not be a worry. Aside from that, um, I feel like there's something else I was just about to say. I'll think about it in just a second. I remember what I was going to say. So, it is how, in the current year, can I deal, live in a society with these people, with SJWs, how can I survive in a society with them? Now, first off, one thing you have to remember is that these people are an extremely small minority of actual humans out there. In fact, even in places you might think of as being extremely leftist, okay, they're still a minority. You know, for example, I was in graduate school, well, still am technically, and while most everyone there is a leftist, well, effectively everyone, except for me, um, is a leftist, there are only a very small portion of them who are dyed-haired feminists, or I uh, just stepped to, through a spider web, um, who are stereotypical SJWs. There are very, only a very small portion of those. But the reason these people su succeed is because everyone else is afraid of them, okay? These people have a long record of Machiavellianly uh, exploiting other people's values to their own gain. They will make lies, they will do whatever they want, they will scare people, they will uh, defame you, it doesn't matter if it's legal or illegal, they will go on Twitter, post rumors, they will do anything, they don't care. Again, they function as a hive mind. So how do you resist this? How do you, in the real world, how do you actually avoid this? Now, I'll tell you what I do, I can't give you the perfect solution, and that is I do not give these people any headspace. In fact, the fact that I'm even doing this video is far more than I usually do. Because as it comes down to it, if I wanted an opinion of one of these people, I would have just stayed in my second grade class, you know? Because my teacher, every teacher from, you know, kindergarten to 12th grade effectively had the same opinions of, as these people. Every college professor effectively has the same opinions or acquiesces to their opinions, okay? So their viewpoint, there's some people out there who say, oh, well, we have to have a, you know, free society when we, we lif listen to everyone's viewpoint. As it comes to these people, I don't really feel like I need to listen to these people. So, I am a firm proponent of blocking these people on social media sites, and I do not give them any headspace in here. There's no, there's no part of my brain that like thinks about these people, you know what I mean? I think about other people, uh, I think about other groups, I think about criticizing other groups, but as far as I'm concerned, I've heard everything these people want to say, and you have too, and you don't care, you think they're morons. So why do you even care what they think? These people are powerful, only because you give them you give them moral advantage. You are too afraid to either speak up to them or just put on your smug anime girl face and not care about them. That's all you have to do, in a sense. 
And I think in real life, as more and more corporations, more and more uh, academic departments are getting taken over by these people, don't look at that as our institutions are being taken over. In a sense, they are. But the fact that the Linux kernel might be taken over by these people is more a statement about the Linux kernel itself. It's gotten so big. It's gotten, there's so much, we have all our eggs in one big basket. And the project has gotten so big that it doesn't have to care about code efficiency or something like that. Or in an academic department, you know, uh, let's say some sociology department has all these people in it. Why? Because, you know, they, they don't have a particularly, they might not have a particularly high level of academic discourse. They really just want some kind of people to do whatever political uh, groundwork they want. You know what I mean? So what I'm saying is avoid these people, not because you're afraid of them, but because they are maggots on decaying flesh. Okay. Wherever they are, the, it's an indication that you're somewhere you shouldn't be. If I have to give life advice to people, which this is the same life advice that I always give to people if they email me about something, your priority should not be succeeding within the system. It should be becoming independent of the system. And that is the one place they can't touch you, okay? Because these people are apparatchiks of the system, you understand? They are, again, part of the hive mind. They don't function outside of it. And if you make yourself independent, if you put yourself in a mindset where they can't affect you, they can't affect you. They can, they can tell lies about you. They can maybe get you to lose your position at you know, some place you shouldn't be anywhere. But the fact of the matter is you want to put yourself in a position where you can be meritocratic. You can be independent of these people. And when it comes down to it, I don't think that you should give these people, again, any mind space. And I don't Fundamentally, maybe this is a controversial take, I don't think that these people should be entitled to free speech. And what I mean by that, I'm actually going to quote from them, okay? Now, in their view, they will say, oh, well, free speech is great, but we have to prevent Nazis from having free speech. Why? Because in their view, Nazis, right, Nazis are big bad guys who want to restrict free speech. Now, I know, I've, I know some Nazis, and I've never met one who nowadays, or actually wants to restrict free speech. In fact, if anything, they want the exact opposite. They want people to be able to debate issues, you know? So if you, uh, someone like Andrew Englin, okay, he's a Nazi, the Daily Stormer guy, right? Um, is he saying that we should restrict free speech? Well, Andrew Englin says a lot of things um, satirically, but he doesn't ultimately believe in that. Uh, I've talked to someone like uh, uh, Mike Enoch of The Right Stuff. He's an evil Nazi, right? Uh, he doesn't support restricting free speech. He's in favor of free speech, okay? Now, who in the political environment, what is the only group of people who want to restrict the free speech of others? The only group. Does anyone know what that group is? Well, you're probably saying it, but you know what the group is. There's only one group of people who ha even have the idea in their head of restricting free speech, and that is these people, the SJWs. So, if we're going to restrict the political rights of someone to you know, obviously this isn't realistic because these people are the mouthpiece of the establishment, but realistically speaking, if we had the ability and the courage to restrict any kind of free speech, it would be these people. Because frankly, we've heard their ideas. We don't like them. They're terrible. We've seen what's happened to society the past, you know, 30, 40, 50 years since they've been ascendant in one form or another. And it's not good. Okay. We know it's bad. And they, their entire goal, not just in the Linux project, but in everything they touch is absolute control. Not just the ability to squash dissent, but to make dissent impossible, to control every single academic department. They basically already write every textbook. They control all of the information flow in our society, what we call the mainstream media, stuff like that. And uh, yeah, that's the place we live in. So. When it comes to me being blackpilled on Linux, or something like that, or their takeover of Linux, I put it in the... Okay, there's some boomer cutting the lawn. I'm sorry if that's uh, it's a little too loud. I put it in the perspective that these people, in effect, have already won everything. And so they... When you control the writing of textbooks, or the media, or something like this, they already have total control. Everything else is just sort of details. And what they're doing in technology, what they're doing in hobbyist stuff and stuff like this, this is them overreaching, okay? It's like when people will say somewhat satirically that, you know, uh, Gamergate caused Trump, right? And there's a, there's a sense in which that's true, 
right? Because a lot of, in a lot of positions, these people are overreaching, they're going too far, they already, in effect, controlled society, um, but now people are starting to realize it. And when you have people saying stuff like, uh, whiteness should be abolished, or yada yada yada, everyone knows what that means, okay? No one needs some kind of decoder ring to figure out what that means, you know? Um, so that's the absolute state of society. So I am, as always, white-pilled. Uh, because if it gets worse, it just means it's going to get better later. You know what I mean? That's my position. So, again, realistic advice. Be independent. Be independent of them. Don't care what they think. You do what you do. Things are going to be okay. I, I, wish the, I wish the best for Linux. Uh, I hope Linus, you know, gets out of his cut corner and comes back and... Uh, you know, has moral authority and, you know, puts everyone, you know, writes all the wrongs. But if it doesn't happen, it's not a big deal. There are other software projects. Linux is, of course, free software. It's going to be okay. Okay? It's going to be okay, guys. So, yeah, anyway, that's about it. See you guys next time.